to see me because I was so vocal about it. I'm a very militaristic person, but you have to know when to use the military. I am the only person up here that fought against going into Iraq. You, now, can I, can now, I make a response to just that? Just excuse me one second, can Randy. I make you a don't mind, to Randy. That? You know, you are on the list. You, you do have your 1%. I would like, and I think it's very important, I think it's important because it's about judgment. It's about judgment. I didn't want to go into Iraq, and I fought it. Because what I said to you, May what I, I said, was you're going to, have, you're going to destabilize the Middle East, and that's what happened. So He's you, referred to me no, in the first remarks. chance. May I make a response? At, right after me. Go ahead, I'll, I'll yield, my, yield the floor. What do you guys say in the Senate when you're talking and debating? Absolutely. Go Whatever. ahead. Here's the fact. When Donald Trump talks about judgment, what was his position on who would have been the best negotiator to deal with Iran? It wasn't a Republican. It was Hillary Clinton. That's what you believe. I mean, the lack of judgment and the lack of understanding about how the world works is really dangerous in this kind of time that we're saying. So is that the judgment that well, you bring look, to the look, table, that Hillary Clinton is a great negotiator, it, that she could bring about a better your deal brother in Iran? And your brother's administration gave us Barack Obama because it was such a disaster those last three months that Abraham Lincoln couldn't have been elected. You know what? As it relates to my brother, there's one thing I know for sure. He kept us safe. I don't know if you remember, Donald. You remember the, the rubble? You remember the firefighter with his arms around it? He sent a clear signal that the United States would be strong and fight Islamic terrorism, and he did keep us safe. I don't know. You feel safe right now? I don't feel so safe. May no, I respond? That's because of Barack, that's because of Barack <laughs> Obama. My brother. That's because of Barack Obama. We've had a president who called ISIS the JV squad, Yemen a success story, Iran a place we can do business with. It's not because of George W. Bush. It's because of Barack Obama. And, what it, and, and, and when it, but, but here on that, on, on that point, though, whether, it's, whether we're talking about national security, foreign policy, or we're talking about domestic policy. Or the, the collapse of the economy. The key issue here is talking about leadership. Now, there's a lot of great people up here, and you've heard a lot of great ideas out there. But I would ask the American people, look at who's been tested. When there were 100,000 protesters in my capital, I didn't back down. When they issued death threats against me and threats against my family, I didn't back down. When they tried to recall me, I didn't back down. And when they made me the number, one of their number one targets last year, I didn't back down. Give me the chance to be your president. Thank you, Governor. I won't back down Senator, on any of these issues. Senator Paul. The remark was made that there hadn't been anyone else on the podium opposed to the Iraq war. I've made my career as being an opponent of the Iraq war. I was opposed to the Syrian war. I was opposed to arming people who are our enemies. Iran is now stronger because Hussein is gone. Hussein was the great bulwark and counterbalance to uh, the Iranians. So when we complain about the Iranians, you need to remember that the Iraq war made it worse. Originally, Governor Bush was asked, was the Iraq war a mistake? And he said, no, we'd do it again. We have to learn sometimes the interventions backfire. The Iraq war backfired and did not help us. We're still paying the repercussions of a bad decision. We have Senator to make Paul. the decision now in Syria. Should we topple Assad? Many up here wanted to topple Assad, and it's like yeah. I said no because Thank if you, you do, Paul. ISIS Thank, will now be in Thank charge. You, Senator Paul. No, Go, I, talk, let me I understand that Governor Bush's name has been invoked, and then we can go to you, Senator Rubio. Here's the lessons of history. When we, we pull back, voids are created. We left Iraq. We should have had a, a forces agreement to stay there with a small force. And instead of that, we politically and militarily pull back, and now we have the creation of ISIS. 36 days ago, in this very library, I gave a speech with a comprehensive strategy how to take out ISIS. And it requires American leadership and engagement. We don't have to be the world's policeman, but we certainly have to be the world's leader. We need to have, make sure that the world knows that we're serious, that we're engaged, that we're not going to pull back, that, that, our, that our word matters. And if we do that, we can create a force that will take out ISIS both in Iraq uh, and in Syria, which will take a lot longer you, time now because of what President Obama's done by pulling Thank back. You, I want to go even Rubio. deeper, and I want to go even deeper in that direction because I think the belief that somehow by retreating America makes the world safer has been disproven every single time it's ever been tried. Syria is a perfect example of it. The uprising in Syria was not started by the United States; it was started by the Syrian people. And I warned at the time. This was three and a half years ago. I openly and repeatedly warned that if we did not find moderate elements on the ground that we could equip and arm, that void would be filled by radical jihadists. Well, the president didn't listen. The administration didn't follow through. And that's exactly what happened. That is why ISIS grew. That is why ISIS then came over the border from Syria and back into Iraq. 
What is happening in that region is the direct consequence of the inability to lead and of disengagement. And the more we disengage, the more airplanes from Moscow you're going to see flying out of Damascus and out of Syria. Thank you, As Senator. you asked earlier today. Jake, Jake, Dr. Hey. Carson. Yeah. I haven't had an opportunity to weigh in on foreign policy. And I just want to uh, mention that uh, when the war, uh, when the issue occurred in 2003, I suggested to President Bush uh, that he not go to war. Okay, so I, I just want that on the record. And, you know, a lot of people are very much against us getting involved right now uh, with global jihadism. And they, they, they refer back to our invasion of Iraq, and they seem to think that that was what caused it. What caused it was withdrawing from there and uh, creating a vacuum which allowed this terrible situation to occur. But it's very different from what's going on today. We're talking about global jihadists who actually want to destroy us. They are an existential threat to our nation. And we have to be mature enough to recognize that our children will have no future if we put our heads in the sands. We have to recognize we have two choices. We either allow them to continue to progress and appear to be the winners, or we use every resource you, available Carson. to us to destroy them I mean, It's first. interesting that you say that because I want to ask uh, Governor Christie about something else uh, that you have said. Uh, Governor Christie, we just marked the 14th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Now, Dr. Carson has said uh, that if he had been president at the time, the United States would not have gone to war in Afghanistan. What does that say to you about how Dr. Carson would respond as president if America were attacked again? Well, Jake, uh, I was named U.S. Attorney by President Bush on September 10th, 2001. And that next day, my wife, Mary Pat, did what she did every day. She traveled through the World Trade Center and went to her office two blocks from the World Trade Center. And after those planes hit for five and a half hours after that, I couldn't reach her, didn't know whether she was dead or alive, and we had three children at that time, eight, five, and one. And I had to confront what so many thousands of others in my region had to confront, the idea that I might become a single parent, the idea that my life and my children's life might be changed forever. We lost friends that day. We went to the funerals. And I will tell you that what those people wanted and what they deserved was for America to answer back against what had been done to them. And I support what President Bush did at that time, going into Afghanistan, hunting al-Qaeda and its leaders, getting its sanctuary out of place, and making it as difficult around the world for them to move people and money. And then he went to prosecutors like us, and he said, never again. Don't prosecute these people after the crime is committed. Intervene before the crime happens. I absolutely believe that what the president did at the time was right, and I am proud to have been one of the people on the stage who was part of making sure that what Governor Bush said before was the truth. America was safe for those seven years, and Barack Obama has taken that safety away from us. Dr. Carson. Well, recognize that, you know, President George W. Bush was a great friend of, of ours, and we spent many wonderful days uh, at the White House. I, I haven't been there in the last seven years. I'd probably have to have a food tester. But at any rate, um, you know, I didn't suggest that nothing be done. What I suggested to President Bush is to be Kennedy-esque in the sense that when the Russians got ahead of us in the space race, what we did is use the bully pulpit to galvanize everybody, business, industry, academia, behind a national goal to put a man on the moon and bring them back safely. I said, you can do the same kind of thing. Declare that within five to ten years we will become petroleum independent. The moderate Arab states would have been so concerned about that, they would have turned over Osama bin Laden and anybody else you wanted on a silver platter within two weeks. There are smart ways to do things and there are muscular ways to do things and sometimes you have to look at uh, both of those to come up with Jake. the right solution. Jake, Jake, I, I don't want to say, say, I say this, Jake is that while that may have been a fine idea um, that Dr. Carson had, these people were out to kill us. I stood in that region with my family, and every time a plane went overhead in the weeks after that, people's heads jerked to the sky because they thought it was happening again. You do not need to go through subtle diplomacy at that point. That can be handled later on. What you need is a strong American leader who will take the steps that are necessary to protect our nation. That's what I would do as commander-in-chief in this circumstance, and that's what President George W. Bush did in, in 2001. Dr. Carson. 
I have no argument with having a strong leader and to be aggressive where aggression is needed, but it's not needed in every circumstance. There is a time when you can use your intellect to come up with other ways to do things, and I think that's what we have to start thinking about. There is no question that a lot of these problems that we have been talking about in terms of the international situation is because we are weak. It's because our Navy is so small. It's because our Air Force is incapable of doing the same things that it did a few years ago. It's because our Marine Corps is not ready to be deployed. Thank there you, are a lot Carson. of problems that are going on, and we need to solve those problems. We need Thank to you, build Dr. up Thanks. our Radical military. Radical terrorism cannot be solved by, by intellect. It cannot, they, they require, they, what they need is they need an operating space. That's what Afghanistan was for Al-Qaeda. It was a vacuum that they filled, and they created an operating space. That's why they had to be drawn out of there. That's why they had to be destroyed. It is the reason why ISIS has now grown as well. We allowed them, we allowed a vacuum to emerge in Syria. They used it as an operating space to grow. And today, they're not just in Iraq and Syria anymore. They're now in Libya conducting operations in the Sinai. They're now in Afghanistan trying to supplant the Taliban as the most powerful uh, radical jihadist group on the ground there as well. You cannot allow radical jihadists to have an operating safe Thank haven you, anywhere in the world. Okay. Governor Huckabee, just today, just today, there was a new report that 50 different intelligence analysts have said that what they sent up the ladder was doctored by senior officials so that they could give some happy talk to the situation that we face. I love the idea of a, of a good intellectual capacity to deal with our enemies, but the fact is if you don't have good intelligence that's reliable and that's honest, you're not going to have good intelligence and you cannot make good decisions. The next president is primarily elected not just to know things, but to know what to do with the things that he knows. And the most dangerous person in any room is the person who doesn't know what he doesn't know. Thank you, And Governor. the reason Barack Obama has been dangerous to this country and we'd better elect someone who has had some executive experience is because we cannot afford another eight years having a person in the office who doesn't know what he does not Thank know. Thank you, Governor. I want to turn, I want to, turn to ISIS. Point. Governor Walker. Last, okay. Good point. We just point. spent the last 10 minutes. Governor Walker, uh, there is a big debate right now. We've been talking about ISIS here and there about this in this discussion. There's a big debate right now about whether or not to send more U.S. troops to fight ISIS in Iraq and Syria. In the first debate earlier, earlier this evening, Senator Lindsey Graham <clears throat> argued that candidates are only serious about fighting ISIS if they are willing to send 10,000 U.S. troops to Iraq, 10,000 U.S. troops as part of a coalition to Syria. Governor Walker, you say, you just told me a few days ago, that the 3,000 U.S. troops there right now are enough as long as the rules of engagement are changed. What do you know that Senator Graham doesn't know? No, to be clear, what I said the other day was that we need to lift the political restrictions that are already in play. Barack Obama's administration has put political restrictions on the military personnel already in Iraq. We need to lift those, and then we need to listen to our military experts, not the political forces in the White House, but our military experts about how many more we send in. And we certainly shouldn't have a commander-in-chief who sends a message to our adversaries as to how far we're going to go and how far we're willing to fight. So I'm not putting a troop number on. What I'm saying is lift the political restrictions. When you do that, you empower our military personnel already there to work with the Kurd and the Sunni allies to reclaim the territory taken by ISIS and to do so in a way that allows that ISIS doesn't go back in Syria, as we were just talking about here. That is the fundamental problem going forward. We have a president, and Hillary Clinton was a part of this, by the way, who has made political decisions for our men and women in uniform. I want the men and women at home to know if I am commander-in-chief, I will only send you into harm's way when our national security is at risk. And if we do, you know you'll have our full support, the support of the American people, and you'll have a clear path for victory. Thank you, Thank you Governor. Governor. Senator Paul, I want to go to you because you have said that the boots on the ground to fight ISIS need to be Arab boots. Uh, we just learned today that despite the Obama administration spending $500 million to help create those Arab boots, there are only four or five U.S. trained fighters in Syria fighting ISIS. What does that say to you about the effectiveness of the idea of the boots on the ground need to be Arab boots? If you want boots on the ground and you want them to be our sons and daughters, you got 14 other choices. There will always be a Bush or Clinton for you if you want to go back to war in Iraq. But the thing is, the first war was a mistake, and I'm not sending our sons and our daughters back to Iraq. The war didn't work. We can amplify those who live there. The Kurds deserve to be armed, and I'll arm them. We can use our Air Force to amplify the forces there, but the boots on the ground need to be the people who live there. 
My goodness, I'm still upset with the Saudi Arabians for everything they do over there. They've funded the arms that went to the jihadists. They're not accepting any of the people, any 